Moss and Annie, and welcome to my moss garden in the rain. You know, mosses love the rain, and I found that it doesn't bother me too much at all anymore. I got over that getting soaked to the bone, and as long as you've got some dry clothes to change into, you, you'll be all right. No, I have no rain jacket on. Uh, nor hat, but that's up to you. I just find those things bulky and interfere. Note, I don't wear gloves either. Occasionally for special purposes, but not when I'm planting. DIY moss gardeners, are you ready to get down and dirty? We're on the edge of my fairy garden. And as you can see, the maple trees have just become massive. They won't attain very much more height but they certainly have spread out. Next to me, or right back here, is a hydrangea bush. It will get much larger and be covered with purple blooms, maybe bluish. And that's where we segue into this point of this video. Have you ever planted anything that you don't want anymore? Well, since I love purple, I got suckered into a juga. Um, I've seen it growing with climasium. It looked pretty cool. I thought, well, I'll try that here in my experimental section of my sun uh, area in my own moss garden. And it has thrived, believe you me. It's been pulled out before, but we're going to attack it for sure. The blossoms were pretty purple, but oh my goodness. I mean, these roots are just in here. Well... I do have a friend that thinks she can benefit from this ground cover, so I'm going to save this for Vicki over here. And literally, you've got to get down in there. How people do this with gloves, I don't know. Now, that was over there on dirt. I think over here, we're on one of my experimental substrates, which included geotex and some nylon eco matting stuff and Lock, yep, there it is. This is going to be hard to get it out. Well, Vicki, have fun planting this. Oh, I do want to save any good mosses, don't I? As long as we get rid of every single root of that ajuka. Now, there are a few sneaky little weeds that'll go over here into the weed pile. And this will take just a while to pull out. Well, guess what I got there? Some of that old netty. You know, what can I say? There are disadvantages to some of these methods of planting, and that's one I found is using netting makes it hard to pull weeds or other objects. Oh, uh, we've disturbed a little worm there. And here comes Bun Bun Kitty to get in the act. Oh, my. We're going to use the magic of video so that y'all can see how this goes um, but I'm not gonna make you suffer through real time of pulling every single one of these out look at it and you see why it was getting on my nerves now this is a common ground cover plant you can see why people like it oh that was a good one ha. I like it back in here where I'm dealing with just straight dirt. Now, could I be using a tool? Maybe. And I do have a trowel handy, which I might end up having to use on that one. Talk about stuck in the ground. Where was it? There it is. Oh, uh, it's because it's right here on the edge of the geotex map, and it's embedded in it. If you do not get every single piece of this ju ajuga out, however, it will come back. Gotta make sure that you get all the little runners that have spread out from this ajuga. See how it runs along the ground. And then get back to that mother plant. Ah! I broke it. Well, 
I get back in there in a bit. I got him. Well, folks, that's a pile of a juga. And it's a running ground cover, but I didn't want it with my mosses. And believe you me, it was not easy getting rid of it. The hardest part of moss gardening is dealing with the other plants in your garden. So, we're getting ready now that I've cleared this area of all of the ajuga, and believe you me, I had to dig it out with a trowel too. I'm now going to position my anchor elements or hardscape, which includes several different quartz rocks. And I discovered one way under here that you can't even see anymore. The branches have gotten so big. So although it's heavy, I'm going to try to move it. Oh, there's a cute little Asplenium platyneuron fern. I'm going to keep him. Oh! <laughs> this is a great little sitting rock. Little, I shouldn't say. Big is more appropriate. But luckily it's muddy. And so it's sliding in the mud. How's that looking? I like it. Now, I also found a cool brick. Mosses grow on rocks. They can grow on bricks. And of course they grow on soil. This happens to be, wow, I believe this is a type of a nyum or a platgeonyme. We'll save that baby for later. Now this big rock here isn't too pretty, and they're going out of the picture now. But they're kind of heavy. I'll use that somewhere else. I'm using the rocks for aesthetic purposes as well as for a practical purpose. This is on the edge of my driveway and I want to make sure that I don't run into the fairy garden. So, here we go. I'm looking back because I'm checking on how I like it. Alright, the next rock it's going to be this gorgeous white quartz that also was hidden away. And I'm going to put it over here juxtaposed slightly because I've got something else in mind that's getting ready to happen. That's the prettiest side. Well, here's the pretty side. I always look at every side of my rocks to see which one I like the best. I left a little hole here. Anybody got an idea of what I'm going to do? Well, I did accidentally pull out some crested, uh, dwarf crested iris, which is iris cristata. And they're just too cute. And they actually need a little more sun. So I'm going to position them right here in front of this quartz. They do need a little soil. Luckily, I disturbed enough soil up. Oh, we don't want any roots of that juga left at all. And these are just dead leaves that came off. Those aren't roots anymore. Okay. Now, I also have these flag iris, which are a native iris as well. But they're taller. And won't they look good right there? Slightly dig them up. The area... Well, it's not too hard to plant these. You're just going to poke them in. Like that. Voila. As I'm positioning my anchor rocks, I'm moving in additional white quartz, which I'm particularly fond of. And I found a cute one buried, so I'm going to put it right here at the corner. That one... It isn't quite as white, so he ain't gonna get to go in. And here. Might end up putting something else there. We'll see. In fact, I have an idea already. I need to bring some other things over. This 
is a cool sculpture and it's made oh there's a little spider it's on quartz crystals and it's metal sculpture actually this was a present to me from my mother when I graduated from college all right it's time to choose our mosses now this is a sunny area so I have selected appropriate species that can tolerate the sun that it will get in this sled right here we've got Entodon mixed with some ceratodon. My next moss species that I'm going to select is Polytricum communi, and it does have a little bit of olicomium growing with it. Oh, and look at how cool the sporophytes are. Maybe we'll take a closer look at them. And if anybody knows Moss Nanny, you know my favorite moss is Climacium americanum. And that's what's coming here. It's growing on a mat, but I'm going to decide whether I need to keep the mat or just pull it right off. Ooh, 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 look at this. This is Brim Argentium. It's a sidewalk moss like Ceratodon is and can be found all around the world. It's really important to choose the right moss for the right place. Therefore, as I mentioned earlier, this location gets a lot of sun. Of course, it gets a lot of rain too. And I normally would say, make sure you plant when the ground is moist or when the moss is wet. But both of those items have been taken care of by Mother Nature for us effectively today. Um, this moss was rescued from behind a lumber warehouse in Charlotte, North Carolina. And of course, the owner just looked at me like I was kind of crazy when I asked him if I could buy, uh, come and get some and dig it. Essentially, I want to plant it right up close up to this quartz rock. And as you see, all I'm doing is just using the little puzzle concept or piecing a patchwork quilt. If you end up with a hole, like I did there, you just find a smaller piece that fits. And if it doesn't exactly fit, pull it apart and make it fit. Do not plant your new mosses with weeds in them, however. And if you can see, and I know it's really hard, but this is a tiny, tiny upright grower. In fact, you can't even see. It's just like minute. But with upright growers, you just butt them right next to each other and press them in. Ugh, see how saturated they are. And you start building your moss garden. Obviously, I'm in the category of the, I don't want to wait for it to grow in. I want it to be instant gratification. And so even right here along the edge of the pavement, I'm going to place this, but that piece didn't work. That one needs to go somewhere else. That one can go right there. Do not leave mud clods. And of course, I'm pretty fanatic and I like to get most of the pine needles and of course any weeds out in advance. Ooh, look at this piece. That's a good one. See why I don't mind getting wet? I'm going to get wet from the mosses anyhow. And by the way, it took so long to clear out that ajuga that I'm dry already. Ah! I'm oh, sorry for moaning and groaning. I am 65 years old. Oh, yeah. See how I'm still pa packing it around this, uh, these little iris cristata here. I'm going to put this right here near the edge, poke it in, like that. Now I have a little tiny corner here that I think would look really good with some Climacium. Where did my Climacium go? 
We'll grab a little bit of that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. See that cute little rock I put there? We're moving him for just a second. While we put this extra climacium around the edge. And now I'm putting my little rock back in place. Something's been eating my iris. I think it might have been that slug we saw. Slugs don't harm mosses. They do slime their way across them, but all they do is leave the slime. They do not leave any permanent scar. All right. Can I get this one to fit up in there? Yeah, I think so. Now, from my other videos, you know that the next step is to step on it. So, you don't have to stand all the way up, but you can press down real hard or you can sit on it. Now, I have a little grotto underneath here that is just too cool. I also think will be another good spot for climacium. I'm going to place it back in there very carefully because I don't want to spill the crumb bums on it. And get it dirty. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at that. That looks good, I think. This is Entodon seductrix. It's a direct sun lover, but it can also live in the shade. It's growing with some ceratodon. But the Entodon is a sideways grower. The Brian we just planted was an upright grower. And you just place it down on the ground, but the catch is that right along the edges, you kind of interweave it in. Over, under, over, under. You'll see as I add the next piece. So I'm gonna just take one part up and go back down. And you can pull your mosses around to get them. Home. That little piece looks like he'd fit right there. Just right. All right. Now right there is where my seam was, and you can't even tell already. It's going to rain again, so I'm delighted that that will happen. And it will help the little rhizoids, which are kind of sort of like roots, but they don't feed the mosses. So I'm placing in a colony that's composed of the upright ceratodon and the sideways entodon, and I'm just going to tuck it into this spot. And, oh boy, look at this piece here. Oh, not as big as I thought. This moss was rescued off of the pavement around the edge of a parking lot. So keep that in mind. In general, all they're going to do is pressure wash it away. Now, if you end up with a little spot where there's a hole, then find another piece out of your resources to put it in there. Well, that one doesn't quite fit, but it will if I break it apart, won't it? Oh, and that one will fit right there. So you just keep building and interleafing. Now I have a tiny bit of climacium left over that was still growing there. And I'm going to pull it up through there. Here's where I added climacium. Let's put a tiny bit more. Right here around this rock. Oh, we would never plant it that dirty though. Oh, shame. Climacium, by the way, is a little bit different grower than most mosses. It has a sideways rhizoid with upright growth. Well, I can kind of show it like this. It creates a linear growth pattern in terms of the rhizoid, but upright little trees. This is where the magic 
begins and the fun starts when you're actually putting in your mosses. Doesn't it? Already the transformation is impressive, at least to me. I'm gonna run it down here to the edges where I've got some of this other uh, older moss from these previous substrates that were experimental in my yard. See, there's a little bit of netting. I definitely want to cover that. Oh, I missed the weed. Boing. He's gone. So I definitely want to cover up this netting part. Even if I'm covering up a little bit of my moss that was already there, it's just too hard to deal with getting it back out from underneath there. But, look, see, we'll take advantage of the very same kind. This is Entodon and this is New Entodon. I want it to look good though, and I don't like any spaces left. But if I did leave them, they'd be all right. Probably right in here, I'm gonna end up doing some fragmentation planting as well after the fact. But for now, we're just gonna get the edges put in. Oop. You can use little pieces or big pieces, you can see. I don't like this little gap right there happening in that brine. So I'm going to add a little Entodon in to help smooth that gap out as well. Mosses are real compatible. And as you can see from the ones that I rescued, they're growing together anyhow. That, this little barren area needs to be dealt with. There's the existing moss. I just picked up the edge of it. You see, I'm not necessarily going right next to it. It's after I pull the, the moss out of my tray or my sled or wherever, then I determine where it fits. It's just kind of intuitive. You'll, you'll get the feel for it. So you see how I'm lifting it up and tucking it under? And you just start building it. I didn't have to do much debris clean up because I just pulled out all those ajuga plants. And the debris process was addressed at the same time. Right in here, we're getting about one little patch right there, don't you think? I do. And you don't have to actually stand up to walk on your mosses. You can do this. And then if you think it's squashed them, go back and give them a little bit of a hand fluff if you think you want to do that. But they'll fluff up on their own. All right, so as I move along and come back this way, I still have a little bit of rough edge I have to deal with. in through here. Now luckily when I pulled the ajuga out there were places where moss was still growing. Out here in this section I've used it as an experimental area with various substrates as well as um, different species. And the dog runs through here too and tears things up. Hopefully he won't tear this part up. And I'm gonna plant some politicum in a minute. And the reason I'm say, not putting it around the edge is because the dog likes to cock his leg if you get my meaning there. I have a little tiny edge there I'm gonna cover up. Oh yeah. And then pull this out from the existing moss that was there. I think it's looking pretty good already. I still don't know why people wear gloves because how can you feel what you're doing when you're weeding and then when you're planting, it's just, I mean, it feels so good just to touch it. 
yourself. Okay, so I've demonstrated the contiguous planting method, meaning that you're going to get solid mosses with your upright growers clamp close in together and your sideways growers interleaf together. I found another decorative element though that is going to fit just perfectly and I'm going to add it right here to arch over this quartz rock. I'm just going to poke it down until it shows. How's that? Okay. Now, we're going to move on to another method for planting. This is called fragmentation planting and you can take miscellaneous moss fragments or pieces of plants and cut them up. I like to use these scissors like this that cut sideways. So I don't even worry if it has pine needles in it. I just start to hold, hold the handful of frags or moss fragments in your hand and start cutting them. I'm using this back here behind the quartz rock where you can't see it real good anyhow and even I can wait for it to grow in underneath the maple branches. Uh, this is a much better method y'all than using any moss milkshake. So don't ruin your blender. Just cut your moss up into fragments, which I've done. And now, I'm going to distribute them just back here along the back section. Relatively, not too thick, but thick enough that I'll have moss growth and, oh, it won't take long at all. There's another method of planting mosses, and that's to use hand-sized pieces of colonies or what would be considered smaller plugs. These can be placed, and in this case, I'm going to put it right in here where I have a gap, and I'm going to stretch it. I'm going to kind of blend the other existing mosses into that colony, and then I'm going to walk on it or stomp on it and give it a little hand fluff. So that's one way you can do colonies. The other way is that you can lay them in. In what I call the cookie sheet method. Now these ideas are outlined in my book, The Magical World of Moss Gardening. And you can see that I'm just using smaller plug pieces, or if I wanted to, I could use hand-sized pieces, and I would cover more ground. But you see, there's open gaps in here, and that's okay. Well, I want it solid right there, though. Sorry. But in this section, I have now put in a series of smaller plugs. If you feel like they might blow away or wash away, and in this case they really won't, but I'm going to demonstrate, just use small twigs like this, and usually azalea twigs are just perfect, and hold them in place like that. Eventually these twigs disintegrate, and by then Particularly, entodon will be attached very quickly. It does it just in a matter of a few days. This isn't an absolutely necessary step, but it's one to consider. With the climacium frags, I cut them with the scissors. You can also take moss colonies and just crumble them apart like this in your hands. Or, Pull them apart, like this. Don't have to go to any real special efforts. You'll see it's starting to come apart. So I'm gonna now take these frags, just like we did behind the quartz, but this time we're gonna spread them in between where the colonies were. 
So it's not going to be full solid looking, but it will grow in quickly. And after I get all of these little frags spread around in between in the gaps, what am I going to do? Well, it's going to be a little harder to walk on the places where I have twigs. So I'll probably just press that down with my hands. Well, we're coming down the home stretch. As you can see, I've started laying in the mosses where the ajuga was pulled out. I've used upright growers and sideways growers, and I created a little uh, new interest area by using a taller upright, the polytrica, tiny little quartz, and this cool log that I've turned up to create a tunnel. Now, for additional interest, always add something that wraps around the corner and makes the garden visitor want to keep looking and walking around and viewing your moss garden from different angles. So I've added a couple more quartz rocks and as a special treat, we're gonna put in reindeer moss. Now reindeer moss is not really moss, y'all. It's really a lichen and it is called Cladonia lichen. And, uh, but the common name is reindeer moss so people get confused. It's not gonna grow the same way and it may end up being more like an annual than the permanent year-round green that we'll get from the mosses. But it'll add a nice accent back here. They like to be in direct sun and they also like to dry out. But when they dry out, Cladonia, and this is Ranger Farina, gets to be kind of brittle and extremely easy to break apart. All righty. Have one more piece. I'm gonna put it back inside this area over here. Behind the politicum. Like that. If you look closely, you'll be able to see that politicum actually grows with Cladonia oftentimes in nature. There's a few barren areas left, and I'm going to go ahead and take fragments of Ceratodon, a little bit of Chimacin, and then the Entodon. And I'm going to spread it back in here. Oh, 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 I see another juga. Let's get that out of there. And so I'm just spreading fragments back in here. It's not going to look as good as the solid planting, but it will fill in quickly. The last step of planting any moss garden is to water it and then to walk on it. Well, you know it's already soggy, so I'm just doing this for show, but to remind you that if you're not planting in the rain, and please make sure to provide your supplemental watering and walking on your mosses to help secure the rhizoids to the substrate or surface or soil, whatever it may be. As you can see, after we got through with that big chore of the ajuga, the moss creates the magic. To finish my moss garden repairs, or actually fixing the ajuga problem, I'm going to add just an extra special touch of some Cladonia lichens already growing with some Polytrica mosses. And I'm going to tuck them right in here. Oh, that's a Verticillata, I do believe. I hope you've enjoyed today's moss journey. I'm Moss and Annie. Like and subscribe to my new YouTube channel and for an exclusive selection of shade and sun moss species, visit mountainmoss.com.